in the not sticking section we are going to have two tasks working out task 2 and task 3 and uh, for that we are going to read the passage so let us begin with reading the passage yeah? T is the common name for a family of uh, mostly wood flowering plants and one of the most important genera. Genera is uh, the short form or a, a general name that is what is given for generation. Okay. <coughs> the tea plant itself is a native of the Southeast Asia. The tea breed you know what is meant by breathing? Breathing means you know you put them for uh, you just process it. So breathing is a process. Here the process gives it out in three kind of uh, teas there. One is called as the green tea, and the other one is the common tea that we get from, and the third one is called as the oolong. Oolong is also a kind of treatment that they give for the tea leaves. So these three types of tea there, the most common we have is the brown tea which is dried leaves. Green tea of course you have heard so much about them. The general thing about this is that whenever you cook too much thing, the aroma and the properties of these things are lost. Therefore the green tea preserves these kind of aromas. Therefore, brewing is a term that they use for any processing of the, it depends on the type of food. It's not only specific for tea, but also for some other foods. From the dried leaves of this plant has been drunk in China since, you, you look at this, since perhaps, you know, it's a doubtful thing. Perhaps means, you know, it's a not very confirmed thing, but says that from the 20th century BC. And certainly since the 10th century before Christ. Well, from which time written records of its uh, use survive. I mean, they have got the records that have been survived and they are preserved. It was first brought to Europe by the Dutch in the early. Dutch means uh, Holland. Dutchland, Holland, Netherlands, all the three are the same in the nearly 17th century AD. After the introduction of tea, there is in 1657, England became the only European country of tree drinkers rather than the coffee drinkers. Tea was introduced into North America by early settlers but was heavily taxed by the British eventually resulting in a well-known Boston Tea Party. So of 1773 here you can go back to the history and find out what happened to this Boston Tea Party on the port when the tea was uh, imported and was thrown up. And you must be able to use this port eventually. So it's a kind of event that has been recorded and I suggest you start finding out the meaning of this and uh, Try to using try using them in, in in your some kind of sentence so that uh, you know what is meant by you. Event horizon is most commonly used term in physics. <coughs> horizon is a thin line that is drawn between two particular events like sunrise and sunset or sunrise or earth and any any kind of uh, process or phenomena and the event that takes place is called as event horizon. So it has become a very famous term nowadays, Event Horizon. You can search, there are some movies also there and you can watch them to find out how people are struggling to find out the origin of the universe and <coughs> how it is going to end. So it's a complete different science thing. So let's come back here. Eventual result is the well-known Boston Tea Party. It is never computed successfully with coffee. So it's not competed with uh, it's, uh, coffee. It has not been able to compete. So staple beverage means, you know, it's a food that is consumed. It's a kind of food. So tea is drunk by about half of the world's population, China, India, Indonesia, Sri Lanka, Japan are the main producers. So it is given there how we produce that. Right? So leaf buds and young leaves are used in making tea. Leaf buds, I think you know leaf buds, young leaves and leaf buds, you know, along with the, the leaves, you know, you plug the bud the, that is this this thing which you have this if you have a leaf there you will always be to have some kind of bird there so this is the bird there and you have this pattern for the tea leaves so this is a bird 
the birds and young leaves are used in making tea the age of the leaves determining the taste at the name of the particular commercial variety how long you preserve so it talks about the age you know how long you preserve them and how long you use them and it gives you the taste and the name of the particular commercial variety thus orange pico <coughs> is made from the youngest leaves and suchang from the fourth leaves there are some generation for which they have classified after picking the leaves they are either either dried or immediately or completely completely produced green teas that is you know they are either dried immediately but most mostly they are not dried in the sun because you know it may evaporate all the aroma around that such as they just do it in a pan fired a pan means you know it's a plate plate fired basket fired high sun and gunpowder so this is the probable way of finding out uh, drying the from what i know about high sun is a kind of a chinese technique for the uh, metal heating of the green teas you know they just use this uh, green tea kind of green chinese tea that is uh, probably heated in the metal pans and uh, then that using the gunpowder or for gunpowder is you know i think you know all this crackers and fire crackers we have are are partially dried and then allowed to ferment to produce various kinds of uh, ferment you know what is mean by fermentation fermentation is a process a general process i'm going to tell you about ferment is when you use milk to manufacture curd it's a kind of fermentation it's a bacterial process and it's a bio process so this produce various kinds of black teas such as orange pico pico hongo and suchang i think i mentioned about oolong oolong tea is partially fired and then steamed thus being intermediate between green and black tea so this is the two different this is what a tea is right? it's called as the intermediate note this point so i told you that we have got tea and green tea this is brown tea we don't uh, use that word but tea means generally brown it's a dried brown tea and tea in between you have got something called as oolong oolong comes here right so after being stirred all grades of tea are packed in file lined chest chest na margada but uh, here it means a kind of uh, kind of process so after it goes through the tubes you know it is being placed in a particular kind of a reservoir so that they are being trying to call it as the chest there to prevent absorption and present odors and loss of aroma aroma and no? aroma is uh, derived from the aromatic compounds which are the cyclic compounds in chemistry and the aroma is usually they carry the smell very good smell or we call it the flavor i think you know what happens when you put onion and kariyapulla in the <coughs> in the pan you get the fumes right that is called as the aroma of the cooking so in china tea is sometimes allowed to absorb the scent from various flowers so they also take it that some flowers like jasmine is a particular flower right so some reference is given there it's a very good thing that reference is given there as you can see this passage includes process as well as a lot of facts and making notes from such passages it helps you can combine the outline mapping method with the flow chart notes from the above passage may look like this so what is tea <coughs> it's native to southeast asia like uh, india china burma indonesia philippines malaysia that are among the southeast asian countries and it has been drunk in china since uh, 10th century bc to 28th century bc that is also there take the question mark is there because you know there is some doubt about that so since perhaps that thing brings that uh, question mark there but it has been well documented up for the 20th century bc so it was brought to europe taken to europe by the dutch holland people to europe and uh, it was introduced into usa the boston tea party famous 1773 is then main producers china indonesia sri lanka and japan look at the process of the tea making leaf buds and young leaves are used and uh, they are preserved and how over a particular age they change the taste and give the name 
how long they preserve like the same thing is for the alcohol also alcohol vodka is there the holder is it is the here is the price and then after that it is picked and then dried immediately this is the first phenomena second is partially dried third is partially fired i think probably firing will lose out all its quantity but after that it is taken out as the pan fried basket fried hais and gunpowder to make a green teas so it's a very good flow chart there so you try finding out the uh, same some process and uh, try to dry a flow chart this is the actual way of writing we have seen as called as a mind mapping in our previous class mind mapping or just mapping there so then fermented and then black tea orange pico pico congo and suchan are there and sorted packed and shipped these are all general terms that we are using but here you got the process here so it is <coughs> steamed and then it's brought to oolong tea so oolong is somewhere between green tea and black tea green tea and black tea or brown tea there so the reference for that is given there right now tas 3 is the following passage you have to read and <coughs> give the soil underline and uh, the passage then and there to find out what is being there are three main groups of oils animal oil vegetable oil and mineral oil great quantities of animal oil come from whales those with enormous creatures of the sea which are the largest remaining animals in the world to protect the whale from the cold and the arctic seas nature has provided with a thick covering fat called blubber so it is a, a process is, is a covering of fat for for whale okay for the whale it is very thick not only whale there are so many arctic animals like polar bear and penguin they have got that when the whale is killed the blubber is stripped off and boiled down either on board ship or on shore it produces a great quantity of oil which can be made into food for human consumption and they are using it for human con food consumption also there few other uh, a few other creatures sealed oil but none so much as well the livers of the cod and the halibut the two kinds of fish okay these are the two kinds of fish cod of cod fish and halibut fish yield nourishing oil both cod liver oil and halibut liver oil are green given to sick children and other invalids who need certain vitamins these oils may be brought at in to any case chemist so how do you take the flow chart there so you just put the oil there classify them into three the like this and then the first one you put a box in box also you put that box also you put and this is start reading then the oil is obtained from animal and then it is obtained from vegetable and then it is from mineral note that this is not crude oil okay if you use crude oil it has got uh, it is extracted from rocks and also even from the Uh, seas, you know, in, beneath from the bed of the earth, you know, someone mentioned that. So the next uh, set of things that you are going to draw for this is that you are going to uh, from this uh, you are putting something like uh, whales. Okay, then you write what causes it. Blubber is a fatty thing that is taken off and uh, it is used for. but is used in ships and many places to make oil out of that and is given to children for the this so along this uh, two other uh, things have been given there something called as a halibut and cod you can mention these three things here also out of this animal and then what actually there and then write about the write about the fact okay vegetable has been known from antiquity antiquity means from very old days very old antic means very old okay no household can get without it but this is easy cooking perfumes may be made from the oils and certain flowers soaps are made from vegetable oils and animal oils so that part part is also there i think you are going to write about what it is so this use for cooking and the thing is making soaps making soaps also there what is the next thing given there cooking perfumes are also there 
So you have got three things that you don't ignore. So perfumes are also made from the vegetable oil. To the ordinary man, one kind of oil may be as important as the another. So this is general line. You are not going to take notes of this. But when a politician or engineer refers to oil, the most always means mineral oil, the oil that drives tanks, aeroplanes, and warships, motor cars, and the diesel locomotives, and oil which is used to navigate all kinds of machinery. This is the oil that has changed the life of a common man. And what is refined into petrol and is driven into internal combustion engine, though. To it, we owe the existence of the motor car, which has replaced private carriage drawn by the horse. To it, we owe the possibility of flying and uh, this is changed the methods of warfare on land and sea. This is a kind of oil that comes from out of the earth because it burns well and it is used in the fuel. In some ways, it is superior to coal in these aspects. Many big ships now burn oil instead of the coal because it burns brightly and is used for illumination. Countless homes are still illuminated with oil burning lamps because it is very. Slippery, it is used for lubrication. Two metal surfaces are being together, cause friction and heat. But if they are separated by thin film of oil, the friction of the heat is reduced. No machine would work for long if it were not properly lubricated. The oil used for this purpose must be of correct thickness. If it is too thin, it will not give sufficient lubrication. If it is too thick, it will not reach all parts and must be that must be lubricated. So here is very well information given for the mineral oil there. So I think you will write some more points about the mineral oil. What are the points that is in? Mineral oil is used for the fuel. Okay, within the fuel is given about uh, cars, motors, generators. It's mentioned about that, and also is talking about the ships because they are not no longer using the coal, and even the planes, aeroplanes that I has mentioned. Okay, fuel. And then a part it is being used to describe about. Uh, what is that? Combustion yeah, in, is, is given there. Dry tanks, washes, motor. What is the other point that is there? <coughs> Land and sea. Second point is uh, the illumination. The illumination is not very much. So illumination means you know it is light because it burns bright. Okay, brightness. So nowadays it's not very much used, but it's one of, once upon a time it was used there. The third part that we are going to draw for this is the lubrication. Lubrication is, uh, is mentioned why lubrication is needed. Lubrication is between the joints, between the joints of the moving parts, moving parts in machine. And that he mentions that it is used to reduce. Uh, uh, Reduce friction. So he's mentioned what happens to the friction. So these three kinds of fuel, illumination, and lubrication, and uh, are from the mineral oil. And of this mineral oil, they have said is from the earth they are digging out. So there should be another actually a classification within the earth. You know, we should call it as actually. A fossil fuel because it was produced from the decomposition of the old animals that died because of this impact of the meteors. Fossil fuels. Okay. Now it has been replaced by another field called the rock. There are some rocks available in many places in South America and North America. Also, the rock oil has uh, got that same property as that of the burning. So now. Now this is the second source of uh, such uh, rock oil, which can be used for the, which can be used for the cars, motors, and the generation. I mean, for all the other purposes. So it's called it's mineral oil, as well, but it is extracted from the rocks. Okay, so so many nodes and things can you can just simply mention about them. I think we have done two tasks. You can just go to some other task, find some article, and draw the flow chart and take the notes. It always gives some sort of pleasure that you have done some, you have got some working. <coughs> Usually, the flow chart, no, it, it should be before any writing of any article. But here, we are just uh, planning them out how it has been there and taking the notes. It's just reverse of the same thing. You try reading that from the. Uh, from the website links that are given there and uh, go to those websites and find out how large the articles are there. If there are very good uh, points there, try 
for noting them the noting the points and classifying them this will help you understand the subject as well as taking on notes and improve your english vocabulary thank you for joining me see you soon